their sky's sinister spirals convey the message of death. Illness has defeated an elephant weakened by the lack of water and the precariousness of its diet. Its body is now a scorched leather. The folds of its skin are like wrinkled mountains of a landscape tormented by the drought. Even the most powerful succumb to the power of the sun. Hundreds of butterflies gather around the body, licking the skin and the ground impregnated with the salts and nutrients of the decomposing elephant. In Shaba, nothing goes to waste. Death generates life. The cycle is complete. And again, God and the devil appear by turns, becoming one. Finally, the clouds arrive, bringing hope. Huge Kiwili form over the part savanna, and three years late, finally release the long-awaited rain. The time of great changes arrives, and does so with the extreme characteristic of this remote region, violently and apparently without measure. And the rains perform a miracle here at the edge of the desert. In a matter of hours, new rivers appear, flowing across the savanna. It is the annual miracle of the lands of the northern district, ephemeral watercourses which remain only during the time of rain, but which leave beneath the ground the water reserves that will maintain life during the rest of the season. To the south, the clouds release enormous quantities of waters over the Abadair Mountains and Mount Kenya, and shortly after arrive in Shaba in the form of violent floods. The only permanent river in the Shaba region again flows with force carrying the sediments to which it owes its name. Iwaso Ningiro, the river of the brown waters. Green once more returns to the lands of Shaba. In just a few days, it changes from a hell into a paradise. Like the animals, the plants that survive the rigors of this region are true specialists in withstanding prolonged periods of drought. And as soon as they receive water, they immediately shoot up, taking the maximum advantage of the time of abundance. There is now water all around. Impalas and grit monkeys lick the fresh leaves in order to obtain all the water they need. For a few days, they will be able to avoid the risk inherent in going to drink at the exposed clear banks of a river like the Ewaso Nigiro, in which, moreover, there are crocodiles. Shortly after the first rains from the ground of the savannah emerged winged emissaries which will mobilize an army of small hunters. With the humidity, the termites fly out from their underground homes and their presence attracts the avid predators of miniatures. For many birds, they are an invaluable source of protein. Even those that generally feed on grains like the turtle doves take advantage of the easy pickings, competing with the true specialists like the kalaos. The sunbirds catch some termites, despite the fact their beaks are designed to sip the nectar from the flowers. It is so narrow they cannot swallow the termites with their wings still attached, so unlike the kalaos and other specialized birds, they have to remove them before they can eat. A 
Among the mammals of Shaba, the appearance of the termites does not go unnoticed. For the dwarf mongooses, the best adapted to arid regions, these energetic insects form a considerable part of their diet. So even when the termites no longer come out to fly, these small hunters armed with powerful claws for digging are able to penetrate into their fortified homes and avail themselves of the feast. The rains completely change the landscape of Shaba. Not only do the plants turn green and multiply, but the scorched plains, where previously the only movement had been the wind, now teem with fauna, a sight which just a few days before would have seemed impossible. The secretary birds are hunters adapted to the open savanna. Their long, thin legs may give the wrong impression, because the secretary birds, despite their appearance, are birds of prey. In other words, they are great hunters. They will spend most of the day here strutting elegantly along as they hunt in pairs. Attracted by the insects that have come out with the rains, a black kite joins in the feast. The kites are aerial hunters which, from high up, locate their prey with lethal precision. But on land they are clumsy and seem helpless compared to their relatives, the secretary birds, whose specialization has made them experts at hunting on the ground. The diet of these secretary birds includes everything from small insects and birds to rodents and even some small felines. And this pair of timid, batted foxes prefers not to take any risks and so make good their escape. In Shaba, all the animal species are adapted to the semi-desert climate. No one would be able to withstand the scarce seasonal rainfall if they were not real specialists in survival in arid climes. And among the different species of guinea fowl that inhabit the continent of Africa, none can better cope with drought than the vulturines, and they precisely are the most abundant species in Shaba. The digestive system of the vulturine guinea fowl is especially adapted to conserve the maximum amount of water obtained from their food, so that even in the driest times on the thorny savanna, the vulturines are able to survive on their diets of roots, bulbs, insects and mollusks, drinking virtually no water. Among the zebras of Shaba are also the best adapted to arid climates, grevis zebras. During the time of abundance that comes with the rains, Shaba fills with herbivores. The vegetation cover suffers the relentless attack of the animals, but the balance is maintained thanks to the adaptations that each one of them has developed in order to get at a layer of vegetation where they will have fewer competitors. Like the grevis zebras, some seek the lowest pasture at ground level. Others, however, have developed increasingly long necks to access the vegetation higher up. <laughs> <laughs> 